there are echo chambers going on. Uh, this is nothing new. This has been discussed. This has been talked about. Uh, I don't think it's been talked about ad nauseum. I don't think that the awareness of this is uh, really uh, such that everybody knows this and deals with their social media and news media accordingly. In fact, if anything, it's only getting worse. So this is definitely a topic that needs to be talked about more. It, that we need more education about this, and I thought I would try to do my best to throw some ideas out there through my podcast that might help, you know, uh, with this topic. Uh, since I have, as my cult experience, I have more than a little knowledge and information about how echo chambers work. Because it's not just something that happens on social media. It can happen in real life. It's all about, you know, who you surround yourself with. And on that note, let's go ahead and talk about this. Echo chambers, of course, is a, is a metaphorical term from uh, an actual chamber where echo happens. You know, you say something and, it, and those words just bat right, bounce right back at you. Echo chambers are, um, there's reference to these on social media where people get into groups, uh, Facebook groups, let's say, or on Twitter, where they are only hearing things that agree with what they think or they have to say. And when you limit your ability to intake information that doesn't challenge you or doesn't challenge your beliefs or ideas, then you get locked in to certain points of view or get locked into certain opinions. And if those aren't challenged in any way, then you could end up embracing and holding on to very, very, very incorrect information. And you make decisions based on that information. You act based on those beliefs or opinions or ideas. What you think are facts. Um, and in this day and age, seeing is not believing. Just because somebody shows a picture to you on the internet and says it is, you know, uh, X, Y, Z, doesn't mean that that is what it is. The picture could have been taken 10 years ago. Put, uh, it could have been photoshopped. Video nowadays is wholly unreliable uh, as news evidence of some kind because, and we've seen this, we've seen many, many examples of this um, on, on all ends of uh, whatever spectrum you care to look at, uh, on, any, on almost any issue you care to look at. So seeing's not necessarily believing, and we have to be more careful now than ever before about how we form our ideas. Echo chambers, unfortunately, are very comfortable. <laughs> they are amazingly comfortable. They do your thinking for you. You don't have to work. You don't have to exert any effort at all. Uh, you don't have to question anything. You don't have to wonder as to what the truth is. When you're in an echo chamber where other people are agreeing with you, where you agree with them, where everything is just, you know, this is how the world is, and of course it couldn't be any other way, well, this is the, the, this just makes life very easy. And if there's one thing that a lot of us don't have these days, it is the time and energy to put into thinking, to put into uh, figuring out what the truth is of the world. You know, what, what really happened? What's really going on? What's, um, you know, what, what's really happening on, uh, in places where we've never gone, couldn't go? Uh, whether that's, you know, this, a city and a state across the way from you or in another country or on the other side of the world. So we're, we're burdened by the fact that we have to rely on the relay of information from, you know, distant places in order to get at the truth of something. Uh, even even things that are not so distant places, but especially so with those. And so we lock ourselves into people that we think we agree with and who see the world the way we see the world, uh, at least initially. And we then start sharing ideas through social media or we start inflowing uh, information, news, pictures, video, from news sources that we think are telling the truth because, of course, we think that our worldview is the truth. It's the one that matters. It's the one that's important to me. It's how I see things. And as long as ever the people who are telling me things also see things the way I do, then, of course, they're telling the truth. Of course. 
it, it, it you know th- this is this is of course I'm I'm talking about bias here, but this is just natural to our thinking. Now here's the thing. This is just one step away from how cults work. Uh, and I'm not saying that we're all living in cults. I'm saying that this is one step away from how cults operate when it comes to something called information control. If you, if Steve Hassan put together something called the bite model, and that is for behavior, information, um, thought, and emotion control. Okay, and now information control is a powerful mechanism. If you control the information that goes to a person or a set of people, you pretty much control their thinking, and you pretty much can control their emotions, and you therefore can control their behavior. This is not any small thing. This is huge. And this is the bread and butter of cults. This is how they work. This is how they get people, you know, in their clutches, so to speak. And um, I honestly think that that you guys listening or watching this right now, uh, I think that this kind of information is one of the reasons why Scientology is a subject in the media and why my channel, uh, for example, is uh, gaining, you know, is gaining popularity. I mean, I just continue getting subscribers on my channel and I love it. It's, it's wonderful because it means more and more people are looking for more and more critical thinking and they're looking for uh, information beyond the salacious or naughty bits of Scientology. And, you know, you can go to TMZ, you can go to celebrity media, you can go to the, you know, the E channel or something and you can get very salacious, very you know, oh my God, I can't believe they did that sort of news. But, you know, when you come to my channel, you're going to get a deeper look. And um, and I think that there is kind of an underlying uncertainty out there as to as to what to think and, and, and how to think. And I think the, that, you know, the, the, the fake news, the concerns about fake news, I think are part of this. But I think it's more than just not trusting our media sources. Social media is a huge concern for people these days because it is, you know, the way that it can, if, if it goes beyond cat videos for you, if you're using social media as a source of news, and according to statistics, many of us are, then it can be and should be concerning to watch things like the Pizzagate conspiracy get promulgated or the idea that, you know, giving your kids vaccinations is tantamount to dipping them in toxic waste. I mean, the I, I see articles like this come across my feed all the time. Uh, fad diets, pseudoscientific cures. I mean, anything and everything that could possibly be wrong with you can definitely be cured by something you'll find on the internet. So this is, you know, this is a problem. And I think people are trying to figure out how to deal with this. They, they, they know, they, they suspect or they know that something's not quite right, but they don't know exactly what. And they don't know exactly what to do. So let's talk about a little bit of this.